Praise the Lord, everyone. We're just going to continue what we were start, what we had started last week. Um, should finish it today. Which is the Word of God? So I'm going to give you a quiz now about last week. Not really, but I might ask you a couple questions. Um, I had made a PowerPoint and took me hours. I've probably worked on it how many hours? Four hours? At least four hours on the PowerPoint, and I deleted it. <laughs> So I don't have it. <clears throat> so I made a quick, an, uh, the quick one, and then this has a lot of scripture, and I just told promise you're just going to have to follow me. <laughs> so sorry about that. It's not as organized as it should be. But I tried. I really tried. Um, so anyway, 
Um, God is good, isn't he? All the time, all the time. So wonderful to see all of you. Um, we're very thankful for you. We love Blackwell Church. And Blackwell Church is you. We love you so much, so much. Wouldn't trade you for anyone. All right, so let's kind of go through. Last week we went through, did we pray? Okay, let's all stand. Let's open this service with prayer. You want to lead us with prayer, honey? Amen. So we talked last week real quick about the amazing book and why it's in, why this um, Bible is important. And then we talked about the Word of God, some facts about the Bible. I'm just going to run through a couple of these real fast, some, some of the facts. Um, the Old Testament was written primarily in Hebrew. The New Testament was written primarily in Greek. Um, the first printing press was invented in 1450 A.D., and the Bible was the first thing to be printed. Uh, let's see, a couple other things from last week. King James Bible is divided into 66 books, 1,189 chapters, 31,214 verses, and 773,446 words, and 3,566,480 letters. That's our Bible. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter. Remember what we said last chap last week? What the chapter is that was the shortest? 117, right, real close. That's the shortest. Esther 8, 9 is the longest verse, and John eleven thirty five 35 is the shortest verse. Um, I want to say this real fast. There are roughly 20, 20 sorry, 1,250 promises in the Bible given to people in various time periods, and there are still 500 that's still working today for us to be claimed by us today. The Bible was penned by 40 Different men writing on three different continents. They were writing in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Over a span of 1,500 years, Moses, this is some of the writers, Moses, he was a prince educated in the universities of Egypt. Peter was a fisherman. Amos and David, humble herdsmen. Joshua, a military general. Luke, a doctor. Solomon, a king. Matthew, a tax collector. And Paul, a rabbi. The Bible was written in different locations. Moses wrote in the wilderness. Jeremiah wrote in a dungeon. Daniel wrote from hillsides and in a palace. Paul wrote in prison. Luke wrote while traveling. John wrote while in exile on the island of Patmos. Patmos? Patmos? David wrote during the rigors of military campaigns. And then we talked a little bit about the Old Testament being 39 books and the New Testament being 27 books. And we also um, talked about, had pictures last week, um, the history, poetry, major, minor prophets, and so on. Um, and then the Gospels are the life of Jesus, and then Acts is where the church started. And then the epistles, everything after Acts, all those are letters to the churches. Those were letters to people that were filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. All of those. So remember that when you read those. Those are to the church. And then Revelation is the prophecy. And that takes us where we are today. Um, first of all, I want to say happy birthday, Brother Buck. Yesterday was Brother Buck's birthday. Let's stand here for Brother Buck. <laughs> so how old are you now? Yes, yesterday. How old are you now? Oh. <laughs> 81. Woohoo! Aren't we thankful he's still around with us? <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to Brother Buck. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brother Buck. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Yay! <clears throat> we love you, Brother Buck. Brother Buck came the first time a long time ago, <laughs> and when we had we hadn't been in the church very long, and his mom was a faithful member of Blackwell years and years ago, and he came. We had a like a fall festival, like a fall service, and a meal, 
And so he came, and we had we didn't have water on the property yet at the old building. And so Pastor fixed some potato soup, but we didn't have water. He brought the water to put to bake them in, but no water to wash them in. So they were dirty potatoes. <laughs> they hadn't been, you know, when you peel them and then you wash them off. There was no wash off. And Brother Buck said, that's the best potato soup I've ever had. And we figured it must have been that little bit of dirt that added to it. <laughs> But he's come ever since. (laughs) But we're so thankful for Brother Buck. And um, I want you to encourage Sister Amber. Um, She has agreed to sign a song because she's a great signer. But she hasn't told me she's ready to do it yet. So when you see Amber say, Sister Amber, are you about ready to sign a song? (laughs) I'm not rushing you. I just want you to to be encouraged by everybody. But she used to, to sign when she was young, and she's an amazing signer. You know, like sign, like the words, like sign language. She's an amazing signer, amazing. So anyway, so every once in a while you might say, hey, Sister Amber, are you about ready? <laughs> okay, no pressure. <laughs> All right, so the Bible, like I said, my whole PowerPoint um, was deleted, so... I made a a quick one. Um, The Bible needs no external support. I'm going to pass that and start with the divine inspiration of Scripture. We know the Bible is the divine inspiration of Scripture. 2 Timothy 3.16. Oh, I've got to get my. Oh, she's passed me the lamp. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. In righteousness. Remember last week we talked about everything you need is in the Bible. If you need counseling, it's in the Bible. If you need help, any way, shape, or form, your answer is in the Bible. But you have to study to show yourself approved. Remember last week we talked about you can't just open your Bible and go, oh, Lord, I need help. That's not how you study your Bible. The Bible says to study it. Um, that's, that's not how you find your help. Open your word of God. Um, Get a strong concordance where you can find your words to help. And the reason we, um, a lot of times pastors say, well, the Greek word is, it's because when when it's written in Greek, sometimes those words mean different things. So that's why he'll say that. But you can look that up on a strong concordance. So you can study. Remember to study your word. Don't just read it. Study your word. The Bible tells us to do that. All right. So the divine inspiration of God. Um, The word inspiration is translated from Greek word, and I'm not going to read the Greek word like Pastor does because we can't speak Greek. But if I did it like him, we'd be like, so there's no reason to say what it is. (laughs) So from the Greek word, which literally means God breathed, it has the connotation of imparting life, much the same as when God breathed into Adam in the Garden of Eden. The word inspired, inspiration, means that the writings are the result of a definite and certain influence of God exerted on the actual inscribers. The word of God is the declaration of God's thoughts, his will, his desires, and his being. Also, I told you last week that I'm taking a Bible. I'm, it's a Bible college, apostolic Bible college that I have enrolled in. And I'm in the fourth class or fifth. I think I just started the fifth class. And you can get a degree. You can get a, um, you can get a degree, associate's degree. And you can also just get a certificate. So if you go like two years, but it's free. It's the cool thing about it. So if you want to study the word, which I love to study the word, you look, study the word, you can enroll in this, and it's free, but you just give donation. I, try, I give a donation every class. So um, anyway, if you want to study the word, this is a great way to do it. It's called Apostolic Bible College. You can look that up. All right. So um, 2 Peter 1, 20 and 22. It might take a minute since I've um, deleted my stuff. 2 Peter 1, 20, 21. Did I skip you? This may take a while. (laughs) Okay, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. Now, we also talked about last week that you can have a Bible that has a commentary, okay? 
that commentary is not the word of God. You, I think we talked about this. I know we did. But if you open your Bible, and it's a study Bible, and it says it's, it's um, what's a commentary, honey? You, there's different ones. Adam Clark, Strong's. There's all kinds of them. <coughs> yeah. And you, on the side of your Bible, it will talk. <coughs> and it ha right. And it tells you all these things about the scripture. You look over here. Remember, that's not the word of God. That those are someone's opinion. Okay? So keep that in mind. That's someone's opinion. So make sure you get a Bible that has good opinions. <laughs> okay, so the word moved is translated from the Greek word, which literally means bear. Along, carry, move out of position, drive, impel. God's spirit moved and compelled, inspired the ancient scribes to write his divine wisdom, will, and instruction as he dictated it to them. They were not writing their words. They were writing God's words. The word is a source of spiritual riches. The Bible is a source of power. We all know that. We've experienced that. It helps us defeat our enemy. Satan. When Jesus was tempted of the devil in the wilderness, what did he use? He used the word because he said, get behind me, Satan, didn't he? Which, in our terms, if you do Matthew 4, 10, 11, in, in our language, um, get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So he used scripture. So if Jesus uses scripture, we most certainly should use scripture. Three times he defeated Satan's attack by saying, it is written. And he won the victory by quoting scripture to the devil. So if you're going through trouble, find your scripture. If you don't know where to find that scripture, ask pastor, ask someone that you know knows the word. And there's scripture there for you to defeat Satan and his tricks. The Bible is a source of great spiritual benefit. When righteous, obedient people consistently, consistently read the word, they, do, they receive tremendous spiritual development and blessing. Psalm 19 recounts some of the ways in which the word blesses us. So let's go to Psalm 19, 7 through 11. And the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. So what does it do? Makes wise simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. Everybody read this with me. Look up and read with me if you can. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Let's go through it to 11. So 9. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. So did you hear all the things? There's joy, there's, there's help, there's hope, but there's... Warning. There's warning as well. The Bible is a source of joy. We like that. Psalm 119. I'm not going to be able to read all these. There's so many scriptures. That's why it took me four hours to read it. Um, how I delight in your commands. How I love them. There's more. Don't worry about the rest of those right there. The Bible is a source of peace. Psalm 119, 165. Tell you what, you can go through anything if you have peace. You know, anything. When you have peace, how many have ever not had peace? Raise your hand if you've, never, if you've gone through times where you did not have peace. If you don't have peace in something, it's miserable. Miserable. But with God, there's peace. When you lean on him and trust him, there's peace. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Those who love your instructions. So if you ever, a pastor is preaching and you're like, makes you mad when he tells you something is wrong, then if it's in the word of God, then you need to get your heart right. Because if you're mad, then um, if you love instruction, 
the, the Bible says also, and I think it's in Psalm, a proverb probably, that um, if you, I can't remember how it says it. I'll move on. Oh, so there, I cannot retain things. I don't remember things. I read things over and over, and I do not retain it. But I know it, but I don't retain it. Okay, four ways in which the word profits us. The word of God is profitable in four very specific areas. Doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction. We already did that. First, the word is profitable for doctrine. So doctrine is a belief, a teaching, a creed, a tenet of faith. Doctrine must not be man's ideas. It must be the teaching of inspired scripture. The Bible teaches us specific doctrines that can be learned through no other source. It teaches us the nature, character, and power of God. It reveals to us our fallen, sinful state. It shows what we must do to be saved and have eternal life. It teaches us how to overcome temptation and sin. It teaches us how to live a holy life that pleases God. It teaches us how to be a part of the church of God. It instructs us how to treat other people. The basis for sound doctrine cannot be man's philosophy, popular opinion, traditional beliefs, or even commonly accepted ideas. The basic for sound doctrine must always be the faithful word of God. Titus 1.9. Is that too hard to pull those up, Promise, because you have that going on? I know. Don't worry about it. Um, he must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message. This is Titus 1, 9. He was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. So when we read the, the word or hear the word preached or taught, it can sometimes sting us as it cuts away the things they need to be removed from our hearts and lives. I remember the old days. I heard someone say it the other day. So, boy, that preaching was stepping on my toes or stomping on my toes, which went, was like, ooh, ouch, you know. But when you take that instruction, the Bible, I was going to say earlier, Proverbs says a foolish man does not take instruction. That's why we want to take full um, instruction because we do not want to be a foolish man. And let's see where I need to go here. The reproof and chastening, chastening of God's word is never for our harm. It is always for our good. So Psalm 94, 12 says, Joyful are those you discipline, Lord, those you teach with your instruction. Now I have tons of scripture, and I'm not going to have time to read it all. So since we can't get it up there. Third, the word of God is profitable for correction. Correction is the next step beyond re reproof or chastisement. It means to mend our ways or to make something right that was wrong. God corrects us by showing where we are wrong and guiding us into the which is right. First comes reproof or chastening. Secondly comes repentance. Thirdly, we must change our wrong and bring it in line with the word of God. An example of the word being used in correction is found in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 4, where Paul corrects the Corinthians, which is the church, in the appropriate way to observe the Lord's Supper and the proper use of spiritual gifts. Okay, now fourth, where well we have that scripture that we're still reading off of, fourth, the word of God is profitable for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness means to be tutored and trained. It means the act of being educated in holiness, godliness, and righteousness. The Bible is the handbook for Christian development, both inward and outward development. I've heard so many people down through life, been in church my whole life, and I'm 56. So I've heard a lot of people say, well, the, I'm just not getting fed at church. Well, that's your own fault. <laughs> and not just here, but just everywhere. If you're not getting fed, then you're not reading your word. You're not studying your word. That's where you're getting fed at. You don't come to church just to be fed. You come to church to help people. You come to church to worship God. You come to hear the word, definitely. But to be fed, you're going to be fed by reading the word of God. There's no way you can't be fed if you're reading your word, studying it. So the Bible is a handbook, again, for both inward and outward development. It is the manual for our spiritual training. As Christians, we don't conform to the attitudes and behaviors of worldly culture. But instead, we comply with the teachings of the word. If you can find it in the word, then that's 
that's where you want to be for sure. Um, guide my steps, says Psalm 119. Guide my steps by your word so I will not be overcome by evil. All right. So the purpose of the word is equipping us. Um, verse 17 of Timothy 3, which is where we have the inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine and so on, gives us the purpose for the four functions provided to us by the word that we may thoroughly be equipped as productive workers in the kingdom of God. The word equips or supplies us with all the necessary tools to become what God has called us to be. Some of the ways in which the word equips us is, I'm not going to be able to read all the scripture, okay? There's scripture for everything. I have it if you need it. Um, the word is creative power. God created. It's got creative power. All he did was spoke the word and, and things were, were made into existence. So the word is creative power. The word is saving power. The word is healing power. The word is receiving, reviving power. The word is cleansing power, purifying and purging power. Five more minutes, so I'm trying to hurry here. The word is judging power. Let me see that because I hear all the time, and I'm not, um, let's see, John, for all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. The word is a destroying hammer, and that's defeating the enemies of righteousness. So Jeremiah says, does not my word burn like fire, says the Lord? It is not like a mighty hammer that smashes a rock to pieces. Saying, isn't it? Isn't it? The word of is a lamp lighting our way, illuminating the way in which we should live. The word is nourishing food. See, there's your food. If you're not being fed, read your word. Study your word. A newborn babe desires sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. And so as, as newborn babes, we should desire the, the, the word. And also, as you have, sometimes you say, you know, like a new person comes into church. Revelation is not for the new person to read because they're not going to understand that. They're not going to understand that. So that we talk about the meat. When you get old enough to eat meat, like a baby can't eat meat, you get old enough. Then some things that you would word, but you can read Everywhere. I'm not saying you can't, but that's strong stuff. So we want to be able to read the word. The word is nourishing food. The word is a stumbling block to unbelievers. It's a stumbling block to unbelievers. Um, First Peter says, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. It's a stumbling block. The word is spiritual knowledge. The word inspires faith. The word is a powerful spiritual weapon. Remember, it's the sword of the spirit. So I'm skipping tons of scripture again, but what attitude should I have toward the Bible? Obey the word. Comply to, conform to, observe, obey, and follow the scriptures. The, in James it says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. We can't just hear the word. We have to do what it says. And then respect the word of God. Treat it with all honor and deference. Glorify the word, giving honor and rendering esteem. Receive the word openly. Have a willing, eager, and zealous heart to take in the word. Hide the word in your heart. And that means memorize portions of it and learn selected verses by heart. Study the word. Allow the word to dwell or live in you. Delight in the word. Love the word. Meditate on the word. Meditating is thinking and rethinking each thought until it becomes your thought. Meditation is best accomplished by committing verses to memory. So if you meditate on it and you say it and you think about it, it becomes who you are, the Word of God. Combine Bible reading with prayer. Prayer is helpful in the process of transplanting the Word into our heart, our inner man. Teach the Word. Instruct and educate others in the Scripture. Give Bible studies. Apply the word. Utilize what you learn from the word of God by putting it to use in your life. Develop the habit of reading the word daily. The Bible is our spiritual daily bread. It is advisable to begin reading in the New Testament with the book of Acts, the Gospels, and then the Epistles, which are um, all the books after 
Acts. From there, you can expand your reading schedule to include the entire Bible. There are numerous Bible reading programs that are structured to help you read through the Bible each year. I've read the whole Bible every year for, I don't even know, years and years and years and years. So you think I can memorize it, but <laughs> I'm pretty good at memorization. <laughs> but um, I've read it through for years and years. And there's all kinds of different. We have on our app, our church, Blackwell Church app, where you can read it. And the, it's the easiest thing. It's not my study time. So a lot of times we'll play it. We didn't used to play it, but it's just he and I now. And, and we have separate study time. But our Bible, church Bible reading, we just push that button on there. We do it usually when we're laying in bed and getting ready to go to bed. We push that button, and it reads it to you. And you hear the Bible so easily and get it all done in one year. When we went on our trip, we didn't have any Internet, so we couldn't do that. So we came back. Um, I had to clean house one day, and so I had to play it. And it took about an hour and a half because we were a week behind. Maybe not that long, but maybe I kept pausing it. But anyway, just all you have to do is play it, and you get the word of God in your head. So you can read it through every year. So how do I study the Bible? And I'm out of time. Um, true Bible study comes with discipline. You have to discipline yourself. Listen to it. Start out, if you don't read your Bible, Start out listening to it every day. Just push the button. How many things do we listen to every day? Push the button. Um, for discipline, so you constantly, consistently read the word, however you can get it in there. And then you want to begin to study it. A casual reading of the Bible, reading a verse here or there, or skipping from thought to thought are poor study habits and will not produce much fruits or genuine knowledge of the Bible. We need to carefully and systematically study, scrutinize, and examine the scriptures. Studying the word is a commandment of God. Studying God's word is both a privilege and a duty. Studying the word of God protects us from false doctrines. Scripture warns us that false prophets and fake beliefs will threaten to corrupt and defile us. Studying the word helps to rightly divide, correctly interpret the word of the truth. The term divide as used in this passage means to cut straight. Paul, possibly referring to his occupation because he was a tent maker, understood the necessity of good workmanship and cutting straight any material that was to be joined together. We are commanded to rightly divide the word of truth. We must be very careful not to force our own interpretation upon scriptures. Helpful tools. Um, this part is pretty much saying um, be careful with, with Bibles that, uh, what's it called when you summarize scriptures, like the Amplified Bible. Um, I like to read different Bibles, but I don't study that. I mean, you know, like, um, but the Amplified Bible is where it kind of summarizes scripture for you. For for. For example, Acts 2.38, we all know, says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Amplified Version says, And Peter answered them, Repent, change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting it, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of and release from your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it's kind of there, but it's kind of, it's not all together right. That's the Amplified Bible summarizes. Now, I'm not saying you can't read other Bibles, but be careful of the Bibles you read. The ESV, the New King, King James Version, um, King James Version are best. Um, I'm out of time. Let's see here. I want to read this one little thing here. Um, the conclusion. The Bible is the greatest tangible possession we could ever hold with our hands. It is God's love letter written expressly to us. The Bible is an extraordinary extraordinary miracle. It was miraculously inspired, miraculously created, and has been miraculously preserved for us today. And as we know, all those men that wrote the Bible, they lived in completely different continents, but they still were, it was all together because it came from God, God Almighty. And I'm sorry for the messiness of this today, but Lord bless you. <laughs> Love you all. Um, if you want to stand up and stretch and get ready for worship, um, and then we will uh, have our offering out. If you want to give your tithe and offering. I know a lot of you give it online or in the app. And here come the kids. <laughs> Don't we love our kids? That's 
So if you do have cash or check and you want to put, bring it up, if not, you can give online. Praise the Lord, church. It's good to be in his presence today. It's good to be in the house. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. I wanted to go over our announcements. Um, tonight there's a Section 4 youth rally at Shiloh Temple at 6 o'clock. If you have interest in going to that, or not youth rally. That's where my brain always is. It's a Section 4 fellowship rally. Um, and Darlin's Modestware will be there. So if you want to do some shopping before or after, they will have a booth set up and you can do that there. I wanted to give you guys an update on our fundraising. I know you probably love so much to hear all about our fundraising, but um, first of all, thank you for getting us to where we are so far. Uh, we wouldn't be able to go to National Youth Convention if it wasn't for all of you, so thank you. Um, we've done a few things so far that have gotten us close. We need to raise about $1,300 more. I originally had told you eight because they gave me an inaccurate quote from the hotel on what our rooms were going to be, and it was however much that is, $400, $600 more than what they said. So we are still working on that. We're trying to raise about $1,300 more to get our rooms and our registration paid for. We have our laundry soap fundraiser that's going on right now. Um, that does end on Monday, tomorrow. So if you would like to order laundry soap, dishwasher packs, um, trash bags, dish soap, please see one of our young people today. They'd be happy to take that order from you. It is a like a five-gallon or equivalent amount. The packs is 225 packs. The five gallons at Menards is about $80, and these are um, $40. So it is a really good value, um, and it will last you a really long time. So if you'd like to order, you have a couple more days to do that. Um, we also will be selling crew car wash um, certificates coming up soon. Um, and then we have a couple of things that are going to launch that are going to be all year where you can, if you, one of them is really neat, it's called Raise Right, and it's if you want to purchase a gift card to give to somebody as a gift or Christmas or birthday, something like that, you can purchase it through this program, it costs you the same amount, it doesn't cost you any more than if you went to Walmart and purchased the gift card, but a portion of that will just automatically be donated to the church. So we'll be getting you information out about that very soon, so thank you again for helping us get as far as we are. We have um, 12 youth that are going to National Youth Convention this year. So that's super exciting, and we can't wait for that. So there are quite a few events coming up as well in October, and those are on the app. This week we have Ladies Bible Study on Tuesday. That will be at Sister Diana's house, but Amanda and Shelly will be hosting that um, and providing the meal. So be a part of Ladies Bible Study. We also have a couple of revival services coming up, a youth event, trunk or treat, which we have sign-ups for in the back. So there's a lot, a lot to be a part of. Um, so make plans to be a part of those things. Be, be sure to use your app so that way you can keep track of what's going on. And worship with the choir. Praise the Lord, church. 
Grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I bet you're about ready to get warmed up, aren't you? Well, I went to visit a church, and it was quiet as it could be. Woo! Nobody was praising the Lord, but nobody but me. Here, well, they said I was emotional, and I kind of felt out of place. Yeah. But when I go to church, I don't just come to take up space. When I, oh, I'm warming up. I'm just warming up. Well, Oh, if you think I'm straight, oh, I'm not going to change. I'm just warming up when I reach the other side. Well, when I reach those pearly gates, and they swing open wide. I'm going to leap for joy because I reach the other side. Well, all my pain and sorrow up there I will forget. And if you think I shot down here where well, you ain't seen nothing yet, oh, I'm, I'm just warming up. Oh, I'm warming up. I'm just warming up. Yes, I'm, I'm just warming up. Without meeting in the sky. Well, now, if you think I'm straight, oh, don't, don't wait. wait for me to change. I'm just warming up. Without reaching the sky. Well, now, I'm just warming up. Well, now, I'm just warming up. Oh, yes, for that beating in the sky. Well, if you think I'm strange, don't wait for me to change. Oh, I'm just warming up. Yeah, when I reach the other side. I'm just warming up. 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 Warming up, I'm just warming up. 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 That beating in the sky. Well, if you think I'm straight, don't wait for me to change. I'm just warming up. When I reach the other side. Well, when I reach those pearly gates, on, they swing open wide. I'm gonna leap for joy, cause I reach the other side. When all my pain and sorrow up there I will forget. Oh, and if you think I shot down here, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, God. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. Oh, I'm warming up. I'm just warming up. Oh, for that beating in the sky. Well, now, if you think, think I'm strange, no, oh, I'm not gonna ever change. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. Warming up. I'm just warming up. Warm I'm, just warming up. Warm I'm on fire. The other side. Yeah, come on, let's praise the Lord. Our God's a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Come on, get up close to Jesus today. Feel the anointing, the favor, the blessing. Hallelujah. I'm just warming up. 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 Oh yes, I'm just warming up. But I'm beating in the sky. Well now, if you think I'm strange, don't wait for me to change. Cause I'm just warming up. Oh yeah, I'm just warming up. Warming up. I'm just warming up. But I'm reaching up.
was reminded after hearing Logan cut loose on that song. The other day I I stand up, stood up here and sang at a funeral. And, and right before I got up to sing, they had Alan Jackson sing Amazing Grace. And I thought, man, that's a tough one to follow. Oh, I feel like wait today was Logan. That's a tough one to follow. Where's he at? He's just cutting her loose out there. I'm proud of him. Thank you, Jesus. I woke up this morning thinking about joy. Thinking about joy. Has anybody ever think about joy? There's joy in the house of the Lord, isn't there? Amen. I'm going to read a little scripture to you here. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence, in thy fullness of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Yes, 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 yes. Psalm 16 and 11. At the right hand of God, we can find true joy, can't we? Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy. Can we just shout out to him? Lord, we're thankful to be in your house. All that are upright in heart. You get your heart right and you can feel some joy. You can even watch a chubby preacher run circles if you get your heart right and feel joy. Isn't that a blessing? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I also thought about, I have lots of friends down in Florida, and today they might be struggling with some feelings of joy. I've got some friends that are that their homes are tore all to pieces, and they're not able to, to be in them. They're not even able to go home. If we could just take a moment right here as we open up into prayer, and if you would entertain that with me, and let's just say a, a prayer that... These folks can feel some joy. They can feel some peace today. God of heaven, we ask, Lord, that all those that are affected by this storm, the hurricane, God, Lord, those that are homeless today, Lord, that you would put your arms around them and try to give them some peace and some joy, Lord, and some encouragement up the coast and in North Carolina, through Georgia, all up through there, Lord. There's devastation. There's lives. I, I, I seen where there's, at last count yesterday, there was 50 lives that were lost. 50 souls that were lost in such a terrible storm, God. And we thank you, Lord, that your ways are far beyond ours, God. And we pray, Lord, that you would be in this house today, Lord, also, God. That you would encourage the saints of this church, Lord. That we could lift each other up. That we could feel joy in the house of the Lord. Because we know there are, the only hope is in you, Lord true joy is in you, precious Jesus. I ask, Lord, that you would wrap your arms around us today, God, that you would bless the singers and the worshipers to have liberty and joy in this house today. In Jesus' name, in the authority of the Holy Ghost, bless your people, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worship with us. Thank you, Lord. You're merciful, God. Praise the Lord. Two. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Woo! We got a new one at church today. Two, like. One, two, three, I four. I was lost. I was bound. Couldn't find a solid ground. I was blind. Couldn't Woo! see how you All called right, let's get our me focus on Jesus. royalty. Yes. But in just three days, you came and rescued me. You have changed my heart, took me from the dark, gave me a new start. I am a child of God. Oh, 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 oh.
a new start. I am a child of God. Oh, 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 oh.
good night, give you way to the dawn. The day is coming, and hope is rising. Your joy will be my strength, your joy will be my song. Hallelujah. If you have a need today, I'd like to invite you to come down and be prayed for. We want to remember Sister Paloma Kelly. She has been moved from the uh, hospital to the re rehab center at Bell Trace. We want to pray for her. She's still having a lot of swelling in her leg, and she needs, she needs deliverance. Anybody pray for deliverance? Anybody believe in that today? In the name of Jesus. Sister Brandy asked for prayer for her back. She is down in her back again and is struggling with that. Any other requests today? Yes. Aaliyah just had her tonsils out and she's recovering. Her, his mom's having trouble with her lung and, and needs healing complete. Anybody else? Yes. Jim and Lila both need prayer. Brother Buck. Brother Buck, his family, Jack Howe, Junior Howe, and, and, and Wendell Howe all need prayer. She's having algebra problems? Allergy problems, all right. Need prayer for that. Sean Dustin needs prayer. His back needs healing. Brown. Gail Brown broke her foot and he has surgery Tuesday. Tuesday. Job interview uh, going well. Say, God, just send her right into it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Cody's been suffering back issues, getting better, but he needs a complete yes. healing. Somebody yes. believe for Brother Cody. Yes. Brother yes. Mike. Teresa Turner and Gary Holt. Hoke. Recovering from a stroke. Matt Brown and his family. Graff. Okay. Matt Graff and his family. Her grandson and granddaughters and her son Jesus' name. His name's Sean. Okay. Is that uh, Diane Hilleberg? Diane Hilleberg just lost her son. I'm going to pray for that. Tyler Lou Allen. Diabetes. He needs deliverance in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. All right. Are God able? Oh, he can only just take four or five of these, right? He can't do any more than that? No. He knows the whole list, doesn't he? He knows everybody on the list. So let's take them to Jesus. You may not remember a name, but whatever you can remember, would you just say it out, believing? Say it out, believing. 
You may not know the details, just say what you can in Jesus' name. We're believing, trusting in a God that breaks a way where there seems no way. There's healing, there's virtue, there's power, there's deliverance in our God. We believe and trust and ask for you, Lord, to work a great and mighty work. A mighty, mighty, mighty work, Lord. Move, Lord, in these situations and deliver. Go, go the distance, Lord, oh God, or go in our community, wherever it may be, Lord, and minister to needs and deliver. Bless those, oh God, that are full of the Holy Ghost and are struggling with sickness. Bless those that are bound by sin, Lord, and full of sickness and trouble. We plead the blood, Lord, that there's deliverance for all in the name of the Lord. By your stripes we are healed. And we claim and deliver and believe and call out the names, or their names we called out all over right now in the name of Jesus. Man, grab the name of the Lord. I believe, oh God, for a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. For Tyler Lou Allen in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For, for the Joneses in Jesus' name. For Sister Paloma and Brother Junior and, and Junior's brother in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Cody, Lord, you'll deliver him. In the name of the Lord, I praise you, Lord. Sister Leah, you'll touch her and deliver her out of her trouble. In the name of the Lord, you'll bless these allergies all over the room. In the name of Jesus, and be gone in Jesus' name. Take over, take authority over the allergies in Jesus' name. We're trusting, believing God for healing, deliverance, power. Praying God for her mother's uh, lungs in Jesus' name to be healed. We're trusting you, Lord, to make a way for Sister Jenna's job. Lord, you're just going to bless her and she's going to walk into that in Jesus' name and be blessed in it. In the name of the Lord, 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 Jesus! Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. If you have need and would like to be anointed, come as they say. how you provided, how you helped me through the night. And I remember how you sustained me when you stepped in. To save my life If I knew
You didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you.
So I worship you There's never been a day Never been a minute Never been a moment That you weren't in it There's never been a time That you didn't see me through God So I worship you There's never been a day Never been a minute Never been a moment That you weren't in it There's never been a time That you didn't see me through God so I worship you, Jesus. I was tossed in the water, but I never went under. You were always on time, Jesus. When I went through the fire, you were right there beside me, and you in the water but I never went on to, and you were always on time yes, Jesus when I went through the fire you were right there beside me and you you didn't see me through God so I worship you there's never been a day never been a minute never been a moment that you weren't in it there's never been a time that you didn't see me through God so I worship you You are always, 
You didn't see me through, God, so I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a moment. Can you sing that with us? That you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God, so I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute. There's never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you, Jesus. I was tossed in the water. But I never went under You were always on time Jesus When I went through the fire You were right there beside me And you were always on time Jesus I was tossed in the water but I never went under, and you were always on time, Jesus. When I went through the fire, you were right there beside me. You were always on time. You were always, always, always on time. You were always. You weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eric James, many of you may know him. I count him as a as a good friend, Eric James. Brother James, there was some songs he just couldn't sing, and I, I can't think of the song off the top of my head. But uh, he just couldn't sing it. He said, and the reason why is he said, I just, uh, uh, it says I'm doing something, and I'm not doing it. It's kind of like uh, praising, I can't stop praising his name. He said, well, I can't sing that, because as soon as that song stops, I'm going to stop. And so, and the whole concept of it behind it was, was his thinking against my thinking, and our thinkings weren't thinking or the same. But you might look at this song and you, and you say, uh, never a moment, never a minute when the Lord wasn't in it. And you say, well, wait a minute. Now, first of all, that's after conversion. But you say, oh, wait a minute. There have been times. Let me ask you a question on, on that time you're thinking about. Were you emotional? Because in those moments of emotion, what's, what's going on? You are being earthly. Okay? You're being earthly. And so what you're thinking that should be a spiritual overwhelming, uh, a lot of times when you're emotional, you're in your flesh. And the Bible says to walk in the Spirit. But if you have, if you have checked lately, I've, I've still got flesh. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, but I've still got flesh, and it's still very real. It still hurts. It still gets hungry. And sometimes it even cries. I have emotion. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So even in my times of my deepest, darkest moments, he's still there. He's just waiting. In your hardest time when you're trying to get through your physical doubt, your, your physical, emotional moment, hallelujah, he's still there waiting to be your God. Your God of the Spirit, which affects your physical. Anybody ever had your the spiritual God affect your physical where he gave you hope where he gave you peace where he changed things where the way was made when there seemed no way so I refute you today if that's what you're thinking there's never been a moment never been a minute not, not in my house oh that's not true my friend he's always been there you just weren't listening you just weren't connected and we've all been there We've all been there. Hallelujah. Oh, right. The old writer said it. Standing somewhere in the shadows is Jesus. Again, some people would write, Jesus don't stand in shadows. He's light. Well, he's, he stands in shadows when you don't want him in your life. You're pushing him off into this separate, setting him off on the edges of your life. He just stands there to wait for you to make a move. To ask him to come, lead, Lord, be Lord of my life, be lead in my life. Yes. Jesus is in your shadows right now. Those of you weary and worried and troubled, those of you who are bound by pride, I said, I can't move. I won't move. I'm not ready to serve God with my whole heart. I, therefore, I can't praise him. I just, I'm just going to lock it up. Well, I'm going to ask you, is that right? Is that right? Sister Amanda was up here singing, doing a beautiful job. But she saw her son down here worshiping, and she wanted to be in the middle of that. She goes down, she begins to pray and, and worship the Lord in, in two different ways, right? Two different ways. As a mother and as a, a singer. And she'll be the first to tell you she's not perfect. Makes some errors, goes and does some stupid stuff and just has troubles you know how I connect with that because I do the same thing I do stupid stuff I make mistakes I fail God so I'm asking you today is that what your, is that what your barrier is the, the stupid stuff that's, that's holding you back because you're not perfect well, man nobody's perfect 
It's real. It's a real thing in the church. And, and I know it kind of gives you the idea that we expect a person to be perfect. But Jesus is perfect. And his righteous blood covers us. And we just walk in that righteousness. There was a woman who went to the well. And when she got to the well, there was a fellow named Jesus there. And he comes up to her and he says, hey, give me the drink. And she said, uh, why would you ask me? Basically, she was saying, I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. Uh, you guys walk around in your pious perfectness. And we're just dogs in your eyes. Why would you ask me to give you a drink? And he said, well, if you knew who was asking, you'd ask me to give you living water that you'd never thirst again. And she goes, well, give me this living water that I'll never thirst again. You know what Jesus took her to? Immediately he took her into the, to repentance. He said, well, how, many, how many husbands do you have? It was her issue. It was her issue. And so she had to deal with her issue of repentance. So she did her repentance. Two things that was stated there. She first said, are you greater than our father Jacob who, who, built, who dug this well? Because it was called Jacob's well. And he was going to get water from it. He said, I could get water from this. But, he's, but she says, are you greater than him? And then she later says, your, your fathers say that you should worship in Jerusalem. But we worship here on this mountain. And Jesus said, I want you to know this. He said, you've got to worship in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. This this whole thing about mountains and Jerusalems and, and piety and perfectness and all that, that's all out the door. What you need is Jesus and the water, the living waters. Living waters. The living waters that Zechariah in chapter 14 talked about. The living waters that in Isaiah chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 12, I think it's verse 3, says, with joy. You will draw waters out of the wells of living water. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost today. You need to repent of your sins. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Have your sins washed away. If you've got all that checked off and you're just fighting, man, would you just let the Holy Ghost have its way and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. I worship you, O Holy One of Israel, O God of the universe, creator of all things. I worship you. This is a Jerusalem. This is no mountain. This is Blackwell. This is Darren. And I worship you. My whole heart. I don't care about the flesh. I don't care about this and the that's. I care about you. Come on, right now, right now. Can you praise him in your way? I don't care. Just praise him in your way. Raise your hands. Sing it out. Wave your hand. Hallelujah. Stomp your feet. Dance, run, shout, roll. Come on, this is an apostolic church today. Let's worship God. I invite you to come. Don't let another worship opportunity pass well, by you. Well, you should have been out. there Jesus when name. I prayed through. Church was on fire in the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost too. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I felt the Spirit moving all over me. Well, you should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire in the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I felt the 
felt the spirit moving all over me well you should have been there when i prayed through church was on fire and the holy ghost from the top of my head to the soles of my feet i felt the spirit moving all over me I stepped in the water, the water was cold It chilled my body but not my soul There's no doubt I've been redeemed Follow me down to the Jordan stream I stepped in the water, the water was cold It chilled my body but not my soul You should have been there when I prayed through Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too From the top of my head to the soles of my feet I felt the spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I felt the spirit moving all over me. And the Holy Ghost From the top of my head To the soles of my feet I felt the Spirit moving all over me Oh, you should have been there When I prayed through Church was on fire And the Holy Ghost From the top of my head To the soles of my feet I felt the Spirit moving all over me
worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. We praise Him for the victory. Oh, weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. We praise Him for the victory. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. Praise Him for the victory. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. Praise Him for the victory. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight.
you make a noise today? Everybody hear me? I want you to go across the room. I want you to find somebody to pray with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You say, well, I don't like doing that. Well, the pastor asks you to do it. Go across the room. Praise the Lord. Find somebody you know. Pray for him. I don't know. He's an old time God. Oh, yes, he is. Come on now. Come on. Break through that. which is great, but that doesn't cost anything at all. So I wanted to mention that. Those are due by October 20th. Thank you. Time, God. Oh, yes, he is. Oh. 